finally got on the Amazon after about six hours in port. The sun's going down, but it just seems to be getting more and more sticky and hot every moment. I'm on a mission. I don't know what to expect or really where to go. All I have is one lead, Dorothy, a nun who lives deep in the rainforest. I'd heard about her work, so I wrote to her, and she has invited me to see for myself. All I have to do is find her. And so I began the first leg of my journey. The Amazon River is over 6,000 kilometers long. I'm just traveling down a fraction of it. My first night on the Amazon. Last night had been unbearable. I didn't know if I was itching from my streaming sweat or the tiny insects trying to feast on me. But the cool morning air and a quick wash helped lift the heat of the night before the sun would rise and try and kill me. I gazed at the seemingly endless bank of trees and imagined all the life they held. Apparently over half the world's species. Other sites were more sickening, barge after barge laden full with rich forest pickings. What had become of the land where they came from? And where were these logs going? That night we completed the last leg of the boat journey and I was glad to get my feet back on dry land. I arrived in Santarem this morning about three in the morning after the most hot, sweaty and bug infested night. Beetles were like covering me, it was, it was horrific. Anyway, we made it here. I'm staying in a nice hotel now. And this is sort of the last safe port of call before I go, well, I don't know where I'm going. I just know that I'm meeting Dorothy, who's a nun. I couldn't get hold of Dorothy, but managed to make contact with one of her friends. She told me to head to Altamira, but to keep a low profile. So, with some fruit from the market and my trusty map, I headed for the next village in that direction. Fresh coconut. Oh, over the garden. Mm, right. Absolutely divine. This is paradise on the Amazon. Can't believe it. We're on the way to the airport. I've just spoke to Sister Dorothy and she's arranged for us to stay at the priest's house. Uh, but she gave me the directions in Portuguese, so I uh, don't know uh, how hard we'll find it to get there, but we'll see. At last, I felt like I was getting somewhere. Dorothy had insisted I didn't take the bus. I didn't ask questions, but wondered why. The Amazon looked great from the air, an emerald ocean stretching as far as the eye could see. But as we descended, the scars of civilization soon began to appear. Horrible, brown and sudden. I arrived safely at Altamira and searched around for the priest's house but my pocketbook Portuguese failed me and I ended up in a little restaurant. We've actually just been joined by, uh, quite surprisingly, by two of Dorothy's friends who have just turned up on motorbikes. We have... Qual, um, qual é o seu nome? Geraldo Magela. Geraldo Magela. É. E aí, Wilson? Well, I've been taken for a ride by my new friends on their dirt track bikes. I don't quite know where they're taking me because 
I still can't understand them, but <laughs> hey, it's an adventure. Let's go. So I put my life in their hands, assuming Dorothy had sent them to look for me, and luckily ended up at the priest's house, in a kitchen with, well, lots of priests. We've come like 2,500 miles to see Dorothy. Yes, yes. And I, I don't how, how, do you, how did you know that she exists? Well, actually, I didn't. But the next day, I would find out. I think Dorothy's finally here. Fine. Oh, come on, come on, bye. Are you Sam? I am. Oh. <laughs> Big Brazilian hook, yeah? I brought you a rose. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Frank, oh, it's amazing to see you. I didn't, you know, I was wondering whether you existed or not. Finally, we had met a sweet 75 year old. Immediately, she told me of her struggle and why she was on a death list. 